Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you. Royal Rumble time is always a very fun time um, around the year. Everyone always wants to remember uh, the great Royal Rumbles of, of the past. And I read this awesome article the other day. Basically, everybody always says when Royal Rumble comes around that it's always very predictable. Uh, but when it comes down to it and the show's over with, everyone always has a very fun time. Basically, if you look over the history of Royal Rumbles, um, you know, definitely almost three quarters of them, if you remember the booking going into the Royal Rumble, very obvious uh, what was going to be the outcome of that year's Royal Rumble. Um, one of the things I always say in my prediction videos when I'm looking at the Rumble is that, you know, normally there's only like two to three guys that you look at uh, from the field of people in the Rumble that you think honestly have a very good chance to win the Rumble. And um, I said, wow, whoever wrote this article is a genius. Very true. Um, and, and last night, um, I saw um, Freaky Nia 88. I uh, was watching some past Rumbles on the WWE Network. I saw Instant Classic 8. I uh, was watching some past um, uh, Rumbles on the network. And I said, you know what? I'm going to fire up a network and I'm going to watch an old school Royal Rumble. I chose to go with Royal Rumble 1998. Honestly, I, I, there was like four Rumbles that I wanted to watch. All of them have different moments that I wanted to see. And um, I, I went with 1998 because I, I just hadn't seen it in a long time. And... Um, I thought it would be a very fun one to do. I ended up only watching um, the, the the Rumble and the main event, which was Shawn Michaels going up against Undertaker. Um, I didn't watch the undercard just because I didn't have the time to do it, but uh, this was a very fun Royal Rumble. This was a great time in the, in the uh, WWF. Um, this is a period where Stone Cold Steve Austin won three out of four Rumbles uh, in a row, and debatably, I, I guess you can say he didn't win the Rumble, uh, but he you know basically still main evented WrestleMania, even though he came in second place place because um, when he was bickering uh, with The Rock, Vince McMahon dumped him over the top. Um, but uh, a very fun period of, uh, you know, um, WWF catching up in the ratings, even though I thought they, at this time they were really putting on better shows. Um, this is an awkward time period because Bret Hart had just left and so many people thought that when Bret Hart left, he was like sort of the heart uh, of the WWF and he was the guy keeping them alive and you know how would they keep going but instead we had the birth of Stone Cold Steve Austin which over the past year was really gaining fire and this is when they were really going to say hey you know what Stone Cold here's the ball take it let's see what we can get with it right now um, it all starts off uh, with Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie um, two good buddies going in and just honestly going out there and beating the holy hell out of each other um, for two minutes um, waiting for the next uh, number three person to come out um, and it's funny because the second the bell rings they, they, they go right with the gimmick there are no friends um, basically everyone in here is a foe because everybody wants to go to Wrestlemania everybody wants to get that spot um, but it's funny because the second the bell goes off um, for number three uh, which ends up being Tom Brady uh, who you're saying like wow Tom Brady was in the Rumble wrong Tom Brady uh, this is the t Tom Brady who was formerly um, Sylvester Sincere I think is what his name was a very failed gimmick uh, from 1996 which it was so bad that people still remember it even though it was only on TV for uh, maybe two weeks at the most um, but uh, Tom Brandy ended up just sort of being the guy that WWF kept on trying to repackage and get back out there at this time he was just really into his Italian roots but he came running down to the rumble and almost the second that he got there uh, he was dumped out uh, by Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie, and then they just went right back uh, to beating the hell out of each other. Number four came out, which ended up being The Rock, um, who was, is still a part of the Nation of Domination, but he was in the gimmick of basically trying to take over the group. Um, he was trying to outdo um, Farouk at the time. Um, Farouk still thought they were a team, but The Rock was really starting to to gain some, um, you know, some popularity and really getting some fire underneath him, thinking that he should be the guy leading the Nation of Domination. Um, from there, we see Mosh, Phineas Godwin, Eight Ball. We see Black Jack Bradshaw, aka JBL, even before the Acolytes. Uh, from there, we have Owen Hart come out at number nine, and as Owen Hart is making his way down to the ring, uh, we see none other than Jeff Jarrett. And um, his manager at the time, Jim Cornette, come out and attack Owen Hart, um, laying him out. 
Um, they, they, they laid them out, and then basically I thought maybe they were going to go with the gimmick because they were the NWA outsiders at the time, that Jeff Jarrett uh, was trying to take his spot, much like um, Eric Rowan took Curtis Axel's in this last year's Rumble. Um, but they just sort of posed for a minute and left, and... Um, after a little while, Owen Hart, you know, got up, dusted himself off, and, and, and uh, you know, got back into the Rumble. Uh, no, no, he wouldn't get back into the Rumble for a long time because they sort of threw out the rule because he came out and attacked Jeff Jarrett when he came out in his later number. I apologize, I messed that up. Um, from there we go with uh, Steve Blackman. D'Lo Brown is a member of the Nation of Domination, and, and there was a spot in there. I, I don't really know if it was planned or not, but it comes off very awkward. Um, D'Lo Brown comes over and attacks The Rock in the Rumble, and everybody knew that sort of the Nation was having some trouble, but it was really just with um, uh, the top two, with The Rock and Farouk. Uh, you had... Um, and D'Lo, and you had Mark Henry, and they were just sort of following along. You even had Kama in there, a.k.a. the Godfather, and uh, they weren't really having uh, problems with those guys. It just was the top two, but you know, D'Lo, I guess, was trying to see if he could take over the, the, the top spot of being the leader of the nation. Um, from there, uh, we, we see Kurrigan, a huge giant, which came running down to the Rumble. He got his moment in the sun. He was in there for a few minutes, but uh, you know, everyone sort of ganged up on Kurrigan and dumped him over the top rope and he fell out. Um, there we go with Mark Merrow, who was a babyface at the time with the boxing gimmick, but still was stable, uh, but they weren't really playing it any dissension of, of uh, them turning on each other. Um, from there we go to um, Ken Shamrock, Thrasher. Um, during this point, um, Cactus Jack had been eliminated. Now we see the alter ego of Mankind um, come running out um, at number 16. Uh, this was during the gimmick where basically all three members of um, Mick Foley were going to be portrayed in, in there. So basically he was getting eliminated, going in the back, changing to the next gimmick, and then waiting for a spot to come back out. So sometimes I like to overthink um, the, uh, the gimmick of the Royal Rumble of guys getting the balls. I was, I was, as we were watching this, I was like, what was it like Rusev when he was that, in that one year where he, um, debuted at the Rumble? He just showed up out of the middle of nowhere. If you weren't watching NXT, you didn't even know who this guy was. He just, you know, walked in there and said, hey, give me one of those balls. And every single guy in the back was like, oh yeah, give this guy one. And then he went out there and ran ruckshot. And even though he had a good showing in the Rumble, didn't show up on Raw and, and for months until after WrestleMania. Uh, so it's just one of those things like, you know, Mick Foley shows up and it, it, does he, he like get dressed in the back as, as Cactus Jack, Do Love and uh, Mankind all separately and go up to the uh, the Royal Rumble uh, Ball. <laughs> I don't know what that thing's called, the little bingo machine, I guess you can say, and, and grab balls, and, 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 and Vince McMahon, or whoever he puts in charge, is like, go ahead, Mick, grab another one, <laughs> because everybody at this point knew that he was all three characters, but it is what it is. Uh, from there, we see the artist formerly known as Gold Dust coming up as a, as a gimp, uh, and then at number 18, we see Jeff Jarrett as he makes his way down to the ring. He's attacked by Owen Hart. Um, Owen Hart co um, comes running down, attacks Jeff Jarrett in the aisle way, uh, and that's the point when Owen Hart slides into the rumble, um, and I guess they just threw out the rule, because I thought there was a rule basically saying that if it was your turn to get into the rumble, if you don't get in by the time the next number uh, goes off, you are eliminated. I, I don't think I've ever seen it used before, but I have heard them talk about that rule in the past. Um, but once Owen Hart gets in there, um, and Jeff Jarrett's in the Rumble, and everybody's fighting around, the Hunky Tonk Man comes out at number 19. And as Hunky Tonk Man is coming out, you see China and Triple H hobbling down uh, to the ring on crutches. Um, and you're trying to figure out why the heck the Hunky Tonk Man joined DX. Uh, but I guess that's just the, the right time for Triple H to plan his attack. And he comes down and tries to attack Owen Hart, uh, where they see them going after him with the crutches, which is just like so bizarre. You know, they, I guess at this time, Owen Hart has more time to, to, to feud with almost everybody on the roster. When was the last time you saw anybody um, on the main roster of WWE 
feuding with two people at the same time. That's almost like booking in layers, which I think the, the writing team as of right now for, for WWE's Raw and SmackDown, their head would explode if you would try to think that this guy would have two feuds going on with two different people at the time. But uh, um, basically, China um, you know, goes to swing the crutch and Owen grabs it and he's sort of mouthing off. And at this point, uh, basically Triple H comes up and he whacks uh, Owen over the head with the, uh, the crutch from the other way. And then China pulls on uh, the crutch, you know, making uh, you know Owen, who was holding on to it, you know, just leap over the top rope and uh, fall uh, to his elimination at that point. Um, Honky Tonk Man, he did a really, really good job in this Rumble. He stayed in there for almost 20 minutes for a returning legend. At this time, he was sort of floating around, you know, he was... Uh, the, the, the hunk of Billy and the, the road dog uh, gimmick had uh, not worked out, but, uh, you know, they were now the New Age Outlaws. They had a match on this show going up against the, uh, the Legion of Doom, but um, that was the last time he was consistently on Raw trying to find his um, the person he was going to hand off his gimmick to and sort of say, you're the new honky-tonk man. And uh, they were going to be the new star of the WBF. But, uh, you know, pretty good showing for him to be in there for about 20 minutes. Uh, from there, we're followed by Ahmed Johnson, a guy that was really big at this time. But this is sort of the start of his downfall. Uh, you can tell that he's really hurt. He's sort of wearing those uh, crutch braces uh, that Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestled in. But he, he's just, you can tell at this time he's not moving the way he would have moved two years ago. I, I, I know a lot of people look at the kidney injury um, that was sustained when he was attacked by Farouk as one of the things that really took him off the thing. But I, I really thought that when Ahmed Johnson came in at WBF, he was a surefire champion. And, uh, you know, he was some guy that they really missed out on as, as being on top. Yeah, he only had a small showing in this Rumble, being in there for about three minutes before Mark Henry and D'Lo Brown of the Nation of Domination joined up and uh, dumped him out. Uh, from there, we see um, Skull and then Kama Mustafa. Um, and then at number 24, you see Stone Cold Steve Austin come into a huge, huge ovation. You you can't even believe the pop that this one had. Uh, it was beyond the point of crazy. Um, he comes in, and, and there's a lot of guys in the Rumble. I, I will honestly tell you that for... Um, um, uh, for the Rumbles, this is sort of a really crowded one where there's always sort of uh, at least four or five, maybe even six guys in there at a time. Normally, when you see guys, you know, stacking up in the Rumble, it means somebody's coming and they're going to have a huge blowout where you just see somebody like Kane or somebody like Undertaker come out and just start tossing guys and just get the eliminations, you know, just built up for that year's Rumble to try and be that year's like sort of MVP and have a good showing, almost like where they dump everybody out having what they call like a Mabel moment or a Diesel moment where you're just like, holy shit, he just eliminated six guys at one time. We never really see that come through in this Rumble. It's always normally sort of crowded at the time. Um, then we see Henry uh, Godwin come out at 25. Savio Vega um, of uh, Los Bariquas comes out at number 26. And this was awesome. You know, Los Bariquas, they come out, and they come out in huge numbers. Not only one, two, three, four guys come running out and jumping in the Rumble all at one time. Los Bariquas, I guess, didn't have enough... Uh, you know, mustard uh, to get four numbers for each guy. I can't even tell you any other his name except for Savio Vega, but um, all four guys come down there. They start attacking people. It's not long before they're all sort of dumped out. Uh, we're then joined by Farouk, uh, Mick Foley's third gimmick, Dude Love, comes out at number 28, and then Chains and Vader ends up being magical at number 30. We fight down until it's Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dude Love, who had had some luck as a tag team, um, where they ran a gimmick of Stone Cold Steve Austin basically saying that he doesn't need a tag team partner. Um, but uh, Dude Love kept on wanting to be his partner. Um, they're fighting off the Nation of Domination, Farouk and um, uh, and The Rock. Uh, we see a, a few hints at Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock as, as being a big WrestleMania main event that's coming our way, um, with Austin and Rock even taking a moment to fight on the outside, where both of them went through the ropes um, to, to sort of get more emphasis on their fight you know, out in the aisle way, um, and getting back into the Rumble and fighting it out some more. But we see Farouk attacks Do Love, tossing him over the top rope, um, and then Farouk goes to start working over um, Stone Cold Steve Austin in the corner, and at this point, The Rock looks like he's going to come over and, and help out, but then he just falls down in the ring like he has a cramp, um, letting 
Um, and Farouk do all of the work until he gets up at one point, noticing that Farouk has sort of forgotten about him, and, for, and, and Farouk is dumped over the top rope. At this point, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock to see who's going to win the Rumble. We saw Stone Cold Steve Austin throw The Rock over the top rope, only to sort of skin the cat and duck back in and try to attack Stone Cold Steve Austin from behind. But the moment The Rock comes up on Stone Cold, Stone Cold grabs him by the neck and just tosses him over the top rope one more time to get the big win. A very fun Rumble had by all and uh, very memorable. This would be Stone Cold Steve Austin's second win where he would go on to WrestleMania to wrestle The Rock and win the uh, WWF Championship. So a very crowning moment in the history of WWF.